We've talked about protecting your valuables when traveling in layers. There's the prevention layer to avoid potentially tricky situations. Then there's the protection layer like backpack placement. And then there's the mitigation layer. That is, what can you do to minimize the damage to your bank account if you happen to get pickpocketed on the road? There's a simple strategy that I use when traveling that can save you a lot of money and keep a bad situation from getting worse. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here. And today I want to help you travel smarter by sharing the pickpocketing mitigation strategy that you can set up with little effort in case you happen to lose your wallet. First though, if you're not already, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and let's get started. When you're out and about, simply being aware of your surroundings can reduce the likelihood you'll be a pickpocketing target. Pickpockets like to stay under the radar and I've made a number of videos on prevention, which I'll link to under the subscribe button below. But no security is foolproof, so this advice is for those times when your wallet goes missing, or you get pickpocketed, or in the worst case scenario, you get mugged. Now I say wallet, but what I really mean is cash and cards, basically just access to your funds. They can be in a money clip, they can be in a purse, they don't necessarily have to be in your wallet. In that group of things, your core valuables are going to be your ID, cash, bank, and credit cards. Let's start with the ID. When you're traveling abroad, if you can, you want to carry a copy of your passport or ID card rather than the actual one when possible. Obviously, if you're going somewhere where you need official identification, like a consulate or nightclub, a copy likely won't work. But just for identification when you're out and about, a copy of your ID, whether it's a passport or driver's license, in many places will do fine. You should check with your hotel or the government website to see what the exact rules are for every country and jurisdiction you happen to be in, but in my experience, when traveling in most places around the world, if you get stopped for a routine police check, not if you're driving and you need a physical ID, but if you just get stopped for a police check where you need to show an ID, a copy of your passport will do just fine. That reduces the likelihood that you will lose your actual passport, and it also mitigates you losing your actual ID if your wallet happens to get lost or stolen. So now, let's go to the next step, which is protecting your cash. Don't carry much more cash than you'll need for the time that you'll be away from your hotel. Like I've said before, you don't need to bring $500 when you're going out for $5 tacos. Again, this is to prevent you from losing more than you have to in a worst case scenario. Most hotels will provide you with a safe and you can use this as a hub to protect your larger sums of money, your passport, and other important items. Speaking of important items, let's talk about your bank and credit cards. How you use them is an important part of your secure money management strategy on the road. For starters, you want to have two bank cards connected to two different accounts if possible. One bank card is the main card that you use at home the most regularly. The other bank card is the one you'll use when you're out and about. Connecting the two accounts, you'll transfer some small but reasonable amount of money from your main bank account to what I'll call the travel card. It might be $500 or however many dollars you'll need for a few days. And I say a few days because you don't want to have to go to the ATM every day, saving you time, but also reducing your exposure to card skimming and just being out at an ATM in general. So what you'll do is you'll leave your main bank card at the hotel, so in the safe. So that's the card that has your paycheck and your savings, like a lot or most of your money, right? So that's the one you leave behind. What you're going to do is transfer like 500 bucks over to another ATM card that's on a separate bank account that's just for traveling. This is the one you're gonna have with you in your pocket when you're out and about. That way if it gets lost or stolen or skimmed or anything like that, you're only losing a small amount of money. The person who has access to this card doesn't have access to all the funds that are behind this card. And if you need more money on this card, you can just transfer it over. You can just grab your phone, transfer a little bit more money over there and just add as much as you need on this when you're out and about. So now that we've talked about ATM cards and moving your money from main card over to travel card, let's talk now about credit cards. When you're paying for things by card, use your credit card primarily, not your bank card. That means at restaurants, bars, or any place where you're going to tap, swipe, or insert a card to pay, don't use your bank card, but rather your credit card. As the comedian Bill Burr says, that's because the money you spend with the credit card is their money, and the money you spend with your ATM card is your money. Meaning if there are fraudulent charges, the credit card company is going to do more to block and recoup those funds than if your ATM card gets stolen and the money gets taken out of there. It's going to be a lot more difficult for you to try to get that money back. 
Disputing an ATM charge is a little bit trickier because the bank has just a little bit less incentive to try to get you your money back. So when possible, use your credit card for charges. It's kind of your first line of defense for credit card theft, fraud, and things like that. So use the credit card and save your ATM card for just making cash withdrawals. And while we're at it, just only ever carry one credit card at a time. You don't want all your cards to go missing if your wallet gets lost or stolen. And if it does, if you do get into that situation where your credit card is gone, make sure that you block it right away. Make sure you block it with the credit card company right away. Most will even let you do that right through their mobile app. So don't waste any time and get that card blocked. And the main point here is to keep your valuables, to keep your money, to keep your cards, your ID, and all that stuff out of harm's way. And I know all of this makes the world seem like a big, scary, crime-ridden place, which it's not, but you can lose your wallet anywhere. You can lose your wallet at home. So these secure money management tips can help you protect yourself, protect your money in the worst case scenario. You can't protect all your money all the time, but minimizing the damage from a pickpocketing or a lost wallet can keep a bad day from ruining your entire trip. Thanks for watching. Those are my tips for secure money management when you're traveling. If you have any of your own, feel free to let me know down in the comments right under the like button. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button too. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video.